And this is why, as we get into the discussion later in the show, that people for the last couple of years, oh, yeah, we've heard Kathleen Kennedy is getting thrown out and blah, blah, blah. You know, it's all this and that. Um, this is a new dawn. This is a new day, folks. Um, I'm not saying that she's going to get fired tomorrow. I've never been an advocate for Kathleen Kennedy is getting fired. She will never be fired. She will be retired graciously. I've said that since day one, um, two years ago. She will be celebrated. She will be giving Lifetime Achievement Awards at the Academy Awards, I think, next year at the Oscars. In she's still... She's walked out the door. There's all these people saying no one should talk to her in Hollywood ever again. She's married to Frank Marshall. It, it and is. that's just it. Kathleen Kennedy is uh I, she's I, an I, untouchable. She says she's powerful. Yeah. She's been untouchable. And I will say this on my channel now. I've said this on other people's videos and channels, and I've gotten flack for it because they don't want to go into politics. But hey, this is my channel. So I'm gonna say what I want. Uh Kathleen Kennedy. Let me be very, very, very clear. Kathleen Kennedy is the Hillary Clinton of Hollywood. Ooh. This is a woman who has who has um, uh, saddled herself to vastly more talented and more superior men than herself for clout. Uh, without Frank Marshall, the man that she married, Without Steven Spielberg, without George Lucas, without Richard Donner, without Robert Zemeckis, Kathleen Kennedy is nothing. Nothing at all. And if you want proof, just look at everything Kathleen Kennedy has done since 2012 when George Lucas, in his own mind, regretfully put her in power. Uh, she cannot make toast. I mean, I she, her last, uh, what are her last four films? Her last four films, uh, let's see, Folgers, um, <laughs> Community Coffee. Uh, yes, yes, Caffeine Kennedy. Sanka. And oh, I like that. What one. else? Yeah, what, what else? Uh, no. So, uh, so just count it, count it this way. The first film in that list of the last four Sanka. is The Last Jedi. Yeah. <laughs> then we have Solo, A Star Wars Story. Then we have Rise of Palpatine. Then we have Indiana Jones, The Dial of Destiny. Mm -hmm. This woman has more than struck out. This is four strikes in a row. Yep. My only issue with all that is that the sequel trilogy did make money. So even though we complained on how bad those films were, they could still look at it and just say, oh, they're just angry men on YouTube. But Jay, collectively, you know? they may have made money. But when you go piece by piece and you go in a lineage, right? The first movie, Force Awakens, absolutely made a profit. Last Jedi made a profit. Uh, the final movie, Rise of Palpatine, they lost money. Because everything that we have heard uh, from Hollywood, from our sources, and, 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 and he has said this publicly, so I'm not divulging anything that's not out there in the ether. Script Doctor. The lowest total figure that he heard from his Hollywood friends that was spent to finally finish the rise of Skywalker was five hundred and fifteen million in production. Oh, 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 oh. So I believe painful. it. I just saying like they they that take was before they spent two hundred <clears throat> mil in in marketing. So that movie Disney lost a couple hundred million on that movie. Disney lost its ass. The thing is, is that Disney got to got to claim the mantle of, well, it made a billion dollars. It's like they don't have that anymore. That pedal has come off the rose. That polish has come off the turret. And Disney, like, I mean, and Odin knows this, is that one of these things these Hollywood studios love to do is use the PR mantle of things out there that people like Anthony DeHalessandro and Variety and, and THR love to use. This is the biggest opening weekend on the third Tuesday of a month, you know, that ends in arch or whatever. Since and the it's pandemic. Like, yeah, it says this is the pandemic. <laughs> exactly, Odin. So like he knows this. It's like you can't do this anymore. You cannot do this after places like Universal Studios have busted your ass on movies like Minions Rise of Gru. 
Do you realize right now, let me put this out there. Get ready, folks. I'm about to blow your mind. A Universal Studios DreamWorks picture that went to PVOD after 17 days, Puss in Boots, The Last Wish, is going to haul in more money from the theater than Indiana Jones and the dial of Who Gives a sh That's a fact. Well, Antonio Banderas can't have it all, okay? He's one for two on this. Exactly, and that's why I brought it up. Banderas is in <laughs> Indiana Jones. That is how stupid this is, is that Puss in Boots, The Last Witch, which went to PVOD in 17 days, is probably going to haul in more theatrical revenue at the retail level than Indy 5. What the hell happened? The big yeah. difference there is that Antonio Banderas belonged in Puss in Boots, whereas mm. no one has any idea why he's in Indiana Jones in the title. Everyone Destiny. collectively did a double take of, wait, what? Yeah. What's he doing in here? What's this? Why did, yeah. why did they? Uh, never mind. I'm not, no spoilers. I, I, I'm here to die, my friend. I wanted to go back and watch him in Expendables 4. So, I mean, it's like, this is. This oh, I was is very cool. expendable in this movie. Don't you worry. It's very expendable. <laughs> and it's so funny. By the Renegade, way. Renegade Jr. Um, loves, and I mean loves, Zorro. He had never seen Zorro until the 4K remaster that came out recently on physical. And we got the 4K remaster on Zorro. He had never seen it before. And I, I he's like, what is this? I don't want to watch this. He watched it. Now he watches it like three times a week. He <laughs> loves that movie. It's amazing. And I'm like, yes, son. <laughs> this is when Hollywood knew how to do stuff. <laughs> I'm like, they don't know how to do stuff anymore. Yeah. It's like, yeah. Well, it. Luckily, they're about to turn it around because Disney has a real winner coming out this winter. Get ready, folks, as they turn around the narrative with The Marvels. The first movie to make at least $30 million is opening weekend starring three superhero I, women, I, I, all I, of pro, different pro, racial pro, backgrounds. Pro, pro, <laughs> pro, let me stop you. You seem to have forgotten something. We have another massive Disney blockbuster coming out in just a few weeks. Sounds spooky. Haunted Mansion. Mm. I actually think thing. a haunted mansion has a lot better chance of making a profit than oh, anything. Yeah. Thank else. you, Jonas. It does. I think it does. I don't know what the budget for that thing is yet, yeah. but it could. It absolutely could. If if they actually, if they were judicious enough to finalize that production for a reasonable figure, like there's no reason that the haunted mansion should have come in more than a hundred million dollars, maybe one twenty five. But you know what? It's Disney. And hashtag, what do we always say here? Hashtag Disney dumb. Ready.